Hi, my name is Brian Kaplan. Welcome to this week's Ask Brian, part of our weekly newsletter, Monday Morning Data Science. So we put out the newsletter each week. This is one of its features. We also often have podcasts from Roger Pang. He's got two great po um, podcasts, um, blog posts from Simply Statistics, and a bunch of links that we're interested in. So sign up. There's a link in the video description below. Also, you can ask a question there. Uh, I try to kind of sift through the questions and see ones that are a little bit more general uh, that, that a lot of people might be interested in. So I got a kind of very practical question this week, which if I were to kind of summarize it, it basically says, what does my logging my outcome do when I'm doing a data analysis and why might I do it? Okay, so um, I'll put some links in the video description that also describes, uh, that gives some more technical details about this, but I'm gonna give you some of the basics. Um, so I'm not a big fan of logging your data solely for the purpose of achieving normality. If you really want to analyze your data um, on that of the original scale, then don't, don't log it. Figure out a way to analyze it on the original scale. Um, but often for positive variables, uh, logging the data actually gives you an interpretation that you want in addition to causing the data to, you know, skewed data to look more normally distributed, which might be beneficial for your analysis. So what I wanted to talk about in this video is what is the, just if you take an average, what is it that you, the log of your data is even estimating? And why is that quantity kind of interesting? Why do we even talk about the geometric mean as a, 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 an interest, something of interest? Okay, so to do this, let me first talk about the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean is just the sum, I equal one to N, of the individual observations. Okay, so that's the arithmetic mean. Okay, the geometric mean, on the other hand, is the product of the observations raised to the one over nth power. So that's equal to E, so um, E to the one over N summation log Xi, where log here is natural log, um, so uh, e to the arithmetic mean of the logged observations. Okay, so the geometric mean, this quantity that we call the geometric mean here, is the exponent of the arithmetic mean of the logged observations, and I'll talk in a minute about a reason why you might want to estimate that. Okay, so when we log our data, if we do, uh, a, if we log our data and fit a regression model, for example, we're just modeling geometric means instead of population means. Okay, now, um, what do these things estimate? So the arithmetic mean, if you have some distribution, right, it estimates the mean mu of the distribution, which is sort of the center of mass of that distribution. We'll call it, let's say, E X I, the average value, the population averaged value of that um, uh, of that population for those kinds of observations. Okay, the geometric mean, what is it? It kind of estimates something a little bit weird. It estimates e to the expected value of the log of the observation. So take the average value of the logged observations, the population mean of the logged observations, and then exponentiate that. So this is some quantity that we don't usually teach in statistics classes, but I would call it the population geometric mean, where we, we always talk about this mu over here, and I would call it the population, we always call it the population mean. Okay, so when you log your observations, you're really um, often kind of translating the question that you're looking at into one of analyzing geometric means. So, um, why do you want to analyze geometric means ever? And the basic answer is often relative quantities are more of interest than absolute quantities, relative differences, you know, relative changes instead of absolute differences, that sort of thing. And I'm just going to give you a simple example here to just really highlight an instance where you'd be interested in a relative change rather than an absolute change. So you have a stock price and it went up 1% and you're looking at it month by month. It went up 1%, then down 2%, then up 3%, and then down 1%. So if we were to take the starting price, start price of the stock, and we were to multiply it by 1.01, .01, then multiply it by 0.98, then multiply it by 1.03, and then multiply it by 0.99, right? Then we would get the end price. End Okay, so that's great. But now if I were to take 1.01 1 
times 0 0.98. Take this part right here times 1.03 times 0 0.99. If I would take that part right there, raise it to the fourth power, that's the geometric mean. Okay, now notice if I multiply the start price times the geometric mean four times, I wind up with the end price. Okay, and you can see that, right? If I raise this to the fourth power, the geometric mean raised to the fourth power is just going to be that number again. Okay, so in a sense, the geometric mean is the average that we're more interested in this case, right? Because it would be the average multiplicative increase month over month to go from the starting point to the ending point. So we are inherently interested more in this case in relative changes than in absolute changes. So it would make total sense to log this data, analyze it on the log scale, and start thinking about geometric means. Uh, so at any rate, this is one of the, I think, one of a couple of reasons why people log their data. And I think it's, it's generally a good one to think about what it actually is you're estimating when you log your data. And we tend in statistics not enough to talk about things like population geometric means. This also has some relationship with estimating medians under some asymmetry assumptions and some other reasons why we might log the data. So I'll post some links to some of these more technical dis uh, descriptions uh, in the video description below. Uh, however, I think this should get you started on thinking about why is it some cases we're just very inherently interested in relative quantities and why those often occur when we have, you know, uh, the kind of data that's bounded from below by zero and looks, looks skewed very often when we think about those kinds of data like prevalences or um, concentrations, right? And these all, all, almost all invariably are the kind of data that people just naturally log. Um, and so this is part of the reason. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. I'll see you next week where I'll have another video. Uh, keep them questions coming and make sure to sign up for the newsletter.